Hello everyone. This is the first in a series, we hope, and we would like to call it the fly on the wall. I am not quite sure who is the fly and who is the wall, but let's find out together. Um, my name is Sam Vaknin, and some of you may know that I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Okay, okay, got it. Sorry. And sitting opposite me is uh, my wife, long-suffering, as she is known, uh, Lydia Rangelovska. And Lydia, Lydia and I are just going to talk, simply talk, as we do very frequently at home, and uh, see how it comes, how it goes. We're going to discuss, obviously, topics that are of interest to you, anything from uh, narcissism uh, in mental health settings to narcissism in society, manifestations of narcissism, uh, how it affects everything from media to, to youth, adolescence, to marriages, to... We're gonna, we're gonna ramble, we're gonna rant, and hopefully you will find our ramblings and rants uh, as interesting as we do. And if you don't, this is YouTube. Switch off, move to another channel. Don't. <laughs> don't. Like Hello, Lydia. Hi. Okay. What would you like to discuss? <coughs> Yesterday, I met a few friends. Uh, one of them is like uh, 26, 27. The other one was uh, 39. And, the, uh, and uh, the third one was between. So I, I, I was able to see what is the gap from the youngest to the oldest, me, <laughs> that was me, uh, almost half century life. I'm proud of it, frankly. But uh, the youngest one was absent, mm, meaning like she had to divide, to be present and absent. The absence was when the phone was ringing, when mm. there was a message from some social media or something. Mm. And she felt obliged to answer. Yeah. In my generation, it was impolite. Yeah. You know, when you talk to someone or you're in a group or something, to respond. You know, we, we wanted the spontaneity, the conversation to... There was some meaning while we were communicating at the time. But with younger generations, you know, they are constantly interrupted and they uh, were refocused, uh, then uh, wanted to again start uh, and or to continue, but they forgot where they were. Mm. So I made a remark like, um, how come this is happening? Can't you at least focus, you know, at, at least to remember the last sentence <laughs> of the conversation before? What was so you forgot what was really important for you to hear? You asked the question, and she did before, and we should have, you know, just among us discussing the, the mm. topic, you know, and solve some issue or suggest different views for her to be able to, to choose, let's say, to what uh, to uh, to choose an option how in which direction she would go and solve her own problem or uh, what we discussed and mattered to her so much and i was uh, pulled back i said you are not orientated not in space mm. not in the body not in the mind you know and i find that uh, these generations up to 30 uh, 30 they are in a mess um, they need more organization. So after that, uh, I mean, we spoke and so on. It's due to some uh, sick, uh, pathological uh, attachment styles, I must say. We know what attachment styles are, but it uh, comes from home. So I found out that she actually had um, not very good example at home. Mm. There is some latent abuse, and she was personally abused, even physically, by, mm. by a know. parent. It, it, look, I felt it on my own yeah. skin. So I had, uh, I had very pathological attachment with you. You're a narcissist, right? 
they are diagnosed with narcissism, but uh, uh, the, the, it, many people will say, what on, on earth are you doing with this person? But they don't understand the, my history, how I grew up, uh, mm. you know, maybe I found some uh, solution or less painful for me personally and found some, mm, found a value uh, in, in you. But uh, she is too young. She doesn't still know what is right, what is wrong. Mm -hmm. So she attaches to everyone and she can't make a difference and she falls in problems all the time. And she doesn't know how to organize her life. You know, mm. is it... Uh, mm. I, I, I try to have a, a bit of a, a wider view. The smartphone is like a portal, portal to another universe. It is through the smartphone or similar devices that you enter another world, mm. which is cyberspace. The problem of, uh, I don't know if it's a problem by the way, the thing that characterizes young people is that they are no longer able to make distinction between that reality and this reality, that universe and this universe. So, if someone calls on the phone, he is as real as someone you're sitting with. As real. It's exactly like that person would materialize mysteriously and talk. So, of course, she would pay attention. So, I think the distinction, the border between virtual reality and real reality is blurring, disappearing. Mm. And it all becomes one universe, one reality to the young people, not with older people, but with young people. So that for them, uh, a friend on Facebook is as real as a friend outside Facebook. Uh, someone who calls on the phone is as real as someone who is talking to them, sitting with them, etc., etc. And this is part of even larger phenomenon, I think. Um, that is the phenomenon of merging of men and machine. Mm. Men and machine are going to merge. They are already merging. We already have people with artificial legs, artificial hearts, artificial this, that. And we are already attached to our devices sometimes more than we are attached to our children. So mm. we already, devices are part of us completely. Mm. So I think in 50 years, men and machine will be totally merged, like cyborgs, and artificial intelligence will be integral part of the body. So I think this, what we are seeing is the beginning of this trend of living as much inside the machine as outside the machine. She doesn't see any difference between yeah, whoever but, called. But to be able to make a distinction... Why? She, uh, For what? Look, uh, she was on, uh, on social networks. She has friends there, friends. In our society, it, 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 you have friends and you, with whom you why discuss would you make a, your... Why would you no, make a the distinction? Thing was, the thing was that they discussed some problem and she asked for validation of her emotions, how to, some sort of help, you know. But she ended up talking to some elder women <laughs> that, that have different values. And, and uh, she turned and she preferred a few hours in reality. You understand? So uh, there was disturbance. She was disturbed. She was like, hooked. She, she had to respond. I she think young people are getting, are getting much more relevant information to them from uh, the smartphone than from outside the smartphone. Here's the failure of society. Families disintegrated. Communities disappeared. Today the young person is getting much more relevant and important and critical information via the smartphone than from example from mother but, uh, let's or neighbor. Be, le uh, but let's be frank. Who are who really have time uh, to be on social media? Then the children who avoid studying or writing the homework for tomorrow, they are much younger. Or some uh, I call them desperate uh, women who found themselves alone, uh, divorced without husbands on social uh, welfare, because this is what I see. But. Uh, uh, they are bored, in effect. Most of them are bored. They don't have what to do. And, they're, and this girl that really has a problem is asking for some validation from who exactly? What is the relevancy? Uh, I mean, 
what they can <laughs> say a, ch- a child from <laughs> i mean like a teenager i think we should ask i think we should ask <coughs> teenagers We should ask teenagers, what is the information they deem relevant and important? And you will discover, I think, that the only information they consider relevant and important is their, relative, their position relative to others, their relative ranking. And uh, the designers of social media knew that. So that's why they put likes and, I mean, to addict, to addict the, the teenager, to addict the teenager to this. So she, for example, If she has a choice between you and your wisdom of the years and so on, and to check how many likes she received or how is she compared to Boyana, her mm. girlfriend, she would prefer this, much more relevant information to her. Because she learned, all the young generations learned, that the real world has nothing to offer to them. Mm. And really, it has less and less to offer. It's a, it's a major problem. The disappointment of the new generation I, I, I ask her yeah. I ask her uh, how come uh, after years years after years there she she explained that the she didn't see the problem as I mean her problem that she described as uh, how I see it from outside I said of course you can't because you're in it and uh, She wanted to prove her, her theory, her narrative, to be, okay, right, that she has to live with it. So she went on social media trying to, to uh, be or to express herself and to explain herself with uh, other that actually she knew in reality as well. But just, she noticed that uh, they behaved completely different in a group commenting on her post, for example, commenting different uh, than the advice, for example, she got them personally in reality. Uh, she meant the same people? Yes. The same people who were in the... Yes. Mm. The response in a group from the very same person was diametrically opposite uh, than what uh, that person told her in uh, reality. So. She even get more confused, and uh, uh, that confusion, she adopted uh, that kind of life all the time to be confused. And that was also very interesting why she chose, uh, she wanted uh, to leave herself in, you know, in this uncertainty. When we all know that it's uh, our basic fear that we cannot predict the future, and we try to solve the problems you know, to feel safe and more grounded, more in reality, when, uh, you know, there is uh, this very basic need. And we uh, can't live, and we are trying to avoid the, the um, fear yeah, of uncertainty. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like a challenge for the young. This is, this is something I can't understand. No, I'm trying to, is it a challenge? What, 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 there, what, what is there behind all this? I think cyberspace and more specifically social media are designed uh, to entrap the young by offering... By confusing them? By, by offering a self-enclosed, <coughs> a self-enclosed informational environment so you don't need ever to exit, for example, Facebook. You've got news, you've got friends, you've got... Uh, or Instagram. But even more importantly, by offering artificial measures of certainty. So they introduce certainty and safety artificially via quantitative measures. How many likes, how many shares, how many friends you have, and so on. When you go to, when you go to Facebook, you have numbers. I have 5,000 friends, I, I received 186 likes, etc. You have, and numbers are always certainty. Always. When you exit Facebook and you go to real, or Instagram, and you go to real life, things become much more fuzzy, much more unclear, much more ambiguous. Youngsters cannot cope anymore with ambiguity, with uh, equivalent. Um, previous generations of young people were able to cope with ambiguity, unclarity, uh, uncertainty, uh, equivocation. Youngsters today cannot do that because uh, they have no other 
sources of certainty. As a youngster, 50 years ago, your mother was a source of certainty, your father, the village, your neighbors, your teachers. There were many sources of uh, the state. There were many sources of certainty. Today, if, you, if you're a youngster today, you're 16, who? Your divorced parents? Your non-existent community? Your cheating politicians? Your, so who? it is escaping. Who? So only two sources of certainty, celebrities and social media. And they are linked usually. <laughs> They are together. These are the only two, two sources left. So young people are addicted to sources of certainty. Celebrities and social media. But uh, the effect, as this girl claims, is opposite. Uh, it's more uncertainty. Because she met these people but in reality. The vast majority of teenagers don't do that. Actually, according to studies, 80% of teenagers make it a point never to meet the people they are on the same social network. 80%. We, that's okay, uh, research met, we did for she the... She met few. Okay. That's created uncertainty. Yeah. The, con the contrast. Uh, I don't think uh, this is <laughs> what, I, what I... I'm trying to, uh, to, to help her getting out from, uh, to distinct social media from a reality. Because even when she's in reality, she, is, she behaves as though she is in the social media. Her reactions are such. And mm -hmm. it's confusing. And you can see the immediate, uh, uh, the, 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 the instant answers. You know, they expect from the other uh, instant answers now, mm -hmm. uh, if not now, then never. Uh -huh. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it uh, creates, uh, it gives a little bit of profile of a, uh, uh, I mean, they are more aggressive, more paranoid. I mean, the, with all, uh, so now I'm not talking only about her, but all those who I met and treated uh, in between, from 13 to for actually from 12 to to 35. So they, uh, it's obvious that they have some dependency on social media. Uh, they know and they are aware that they don't get the positive or they, they, their emotions are not validated because they don't really uh, uh, know what are the values of those people who are on social media. And they can change their minds depending on uh, what is discussed there, I mean on the post or whatever the reason is, uh, the comments, and they are pretty, you know, contradicting. The same person can, I notice that. I, I also had private letters. I was on Facebook. I opened it much later, like four years ago. But I don't, I really don't know when was the last time I visited my Facebook page. The, what I was repelled by is that uh, people there responded on what they heard last. And they were not even thinking that they were actually contradicting themselves. And this is the confusion. Not, but, and, I, and that person is still there. Why? I'm asking. Why? She wants to be confused all the time. That is the point that I don't understand. What do you suggest? That she leaves uh, social media? Or she leaves reality? When I was, Which uh, of the two? When I was... Uh, actually put in a, you know, the, you know the reason why I, I went out. Um, I, I said this person is not, uh, you know, something is, there were too many glitches in the correspondence, so it, actually few, never mind. But uh, it was too uh, different of how she represented herself, how she uh, commented on a, Oh, no. Why would you suggest to uh, that to youngster to, go, to leave social media? It's not only youngster. To whoever. There are to leave a group of media. people yeah. that they are becoming dependent on the confusion. Uh, by actually confusion, they get information from social media, from who knows who. We don't even know. Maybe they are 62, but actually they are, in reality, they are 18 years old. And they play clever. They are, everyone plays clever. But they don't uh, really... Um, 
of, I don't know, it's uh, the information that they are passing. It, it's really confusing for the other. We are different, we are coming from different places, we have different backgrounds, families, different attachment styles, different uh, traditions, whatever, you know, we are different, differently. They want to unify it. I think and this, and yeah. most of the uh, uh, young people that I met here, uh, they want to leave. What? They, they, they think that uh, the life there is better? Some of them really went and uh, worked abroad for summertime, summer camp, studies. But, um, and they all comment that they feel like two personalities. You know, and uh, if you know, I showed you the quantum test of a person who lives uh, in abroad and mm -hmm. here, and her behavior is completely different. Like, really, like she had two personalities. No wonder she said, can you help me integrate the two? You know, it's, uh, it's, the effect is enormous. So the environment... So you're comparing input. it to social media? I, I didn't understand uh, why... Social you... media is environment. Mm -hmm. It's global environment. Mm -hmm. This country is this country. Uh, the other countries... But, but when you go and visit, you read about it. First, you have some reserve. You go, you meet people, you see how it is, can you adapt or not. There is, not some, there is nothing like that in social media. You instantly belong. No, is I, think, this uh, the, hmm? I think social media has, has a very important <coughs> characteristic that separ separates it from, uh, for example, immigration or finding yourself in a new environment. Social media is a private case of uh, online multiplayer games. Online multiplayer games started long before social media. These are games where you play online with thousands of other people, millions, sometimes millions of other people. It's, there's a territory that looks physical territory. So when you, when you log into the game, mm. you find yourself in a country. The country has rules and flag and coins and it's absolute real country. You can use the money that you make in that country to buy goods in that country some of these goods have real life, uh, real life equivalents. So if you buy something in that country online, you get it by mail, yeah. some real thing. So it is interface with reality. But it's a whole continent or environment or country where you live. And many, many, many people became so addicted to it that they actually spend much more time in that imaginary country than in reality. In that imaginary, in these multi, online multiplayer games, you can't be yourself. You have to choose something called avatar. The avatar, you buy it in a store usually. It's the avatar is an image, figure, that is you. So you can be a man and choose avatar yeah. of a woman yeah. and so on. Why am I mentioning all this? Yeah. Because in my view, Facebook for, and Instagram, for example, they are multiplayer games. Online multiplayer mm. games. Mm. Like who will pretend more? <laughs> you, are, you are not yourself on Facebook and you present a syn synthetic version of yourself, ster sterilized version of yourself. You obviously don't share your real emotions. Some Con people do. Very few. Confess, uh, admit to having a love affair. Um, it's... Uh, very sterilized version. What you are yourself. saying is that everyone is fake there. Yes. But I know also that everyone some is people an, are very is an, honest there. Everyone is an avatar. They're not honest. They choose to expose um, <coughs> private information that enhances their avatar. So, for example, if the avatar is, I'm a victim, they will reveal information that will support their victimhood. But they will not, for example, reveal information where they are abusive. I know a psychopath. Yeah. You will cry on the stories that she publishes. Yes. But she's a, in reality, she is a psychopath. So that's it. That's what I'm saying. They, they, everyone chooses an avatar. When they open Facebook account, they choose an avatar. Uh, unconsciously, they choose avatar. I did not. So, for example, uh, if I show open an account, it would be the genius account. So I would show how clever I am, how amazing I am. But I would not talk, for example, about my sexuality or... 
So, but you did. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Example. So, I think uh, it, uh, Facebook and Instagram are forms of multiplayer games. I think that's precisely the source of the confusion, because they are multiplayer games pretending to be reality. Mm. This is the source of the confusion. It's a game. But when you enter it, you are forced to... And that's why, for example, they are called friends. Facebook friends. Friend is something that comes only in reality. And yet, total strangers. In Facebook, they are called friends. Mm. To deceive you. It's a very deceitful environment. It is. Where a game... Uh, multiplayer games are called multiplayer games. You know you're playing a game. You're not an idiot. You mm. don't think you are the avatar. Yeah? Yeah. You invest a lot of intellectual effort and imagination in becoming the avatar. But it's a game. It's like acting in a movie. When you act in a movie, you don't think you are the, the, the character. You still know you are George Clooney. You don't, think, you don't confuse and say, am I George Clooney or am I... But when you are acting on Facebook, you do get confused. You're saying, am I Sam Vaknin or am I the Sam Vaknin of Facebook? It's, um, it's very disorienting because so they pretend to be reality. Okay, I try to be <coughs> honest. I mean, I, I posted everything what I felt like posting. It was me, actually. I didn't choose an avatar and... Uh, no one chooses avatar. I'm saying you behave like an avatar. You become okay, an avatar. But I try to be as honest as possible. How they, the others perceive me... I don't think you were, you were honest and I don't think you were dishonest. I think you were totally... I didn't... Totally impersonal. You posted uh, some... So this is another choice, but it's also an avatar. But look, what, uh, what is the impact of it? I'm not there anymore. I'm disgusted. Okay. It's not some only people. that. It, uh, I lost the trust in those people. You because, to... because I saw the discrepancy, what they were writing, what they were commenting, how they behaved, you know. For people your age. I spent yeah. four hours. I had some uh, uh, people, people there, really, they presented themselves that they were, you know, in a very uh, situation. So, uh, trying to help, understand, you know, give them another perspective. For them to understand, but it was a waste of time, complete waste of time. So I concluded, I mean, there are only few that they are genuine and they are, you know, stable. They are stable. Still, I mean, uh, still they're showing their, you they are. Their, their still, values. Still they have a filter. I mean, it's not possible not to have a filter. Of course it is. Yeah. But uh, there were some comments they didn't publish on the post that, I posted, but they sent me a private message. They sent me a private message and then we discussed for real. Yeah, but it wasn't on the wall. Hmm. So it, uh, uh, the, they are, people limit themselves in uh, uh, even expressing uh, their real views, their real values, you know. Uh, yes, the, I got a, a message. Oh, I saw some uh, last video. How come he is uh, putting his sleeve up? I said, uh, what about the content? Who care? I didn't even notice. I was listening what he had to say. I did, I did not, I didn't even notice that he did that. We all have. But if but, you are... So the other day you told me that uh, context doesn't matter anymore. And when you make a clever con uh, comment, people start actually to abuse you. They attack you. You think you are clever, that you know everything. <laughs> it's not about that. I'm open to communication. Let's, let's talk about it. But, uh, let's find some common understanding. Let's help each other. But they uh, continue to curse, to humiliate. You know, they're fighting with uh, someone else. I said, I didn't want to enter a battlefield. The social media, uh, Facebook especially, turned for me a battlefield. You know, uh, people threaten just out of blue. They don't know me. They don't live with me. It's not people. They, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I understand. These but, behaviors. But why? So what I'm trying to say, it's abuse. 
these behaviors you open yourself to abuse that's yeah. why i'm not there real people would never engage in these behaviors yes avatars can do anything that's precisely it avatars can do anything it's a little like the truman show or the matrix yeah okay truman believed fully that he was living a real life <coughs> yeah he believed he was living a real life he didn't realize that his wife was an actress it was all a show he believed that he was re- a uh, teenager who who has an Instagram account is very easy for her to confuse the Instagram account with real life and to render herself an avatar because she will filter what she's posting sometimes the peer pressure will filter it for her but always there will be filter the second there is a filter it's not you it's an avatar acting and so on. now avatars can do anything they can be aggressive they can threaten they can humiliate abuse the impression that i got avatars can do anything impression that i got is uh, the social media is a perfect tool for really people who can't stand themselves in reality it's delusional way out yes true it's they uh, it's their false self being not the you the avatars what you are describing is their uh false self true i agree so This is what how I uh, what I felt that they are all uh too grandiose or too narcissistic. Not does no. does, so, does very abusive. Sam, you know that I have the false self, for yes, that. false self, yes, but it doesn't but, have to be grandiose false self, but it's false. I agree. Case. I'm just putting comma and no. this and this. Okay. No. So you when uh, from the sentence I write You know, I am like, wow, not this person. So, I didn't know that in 2014. But later, you know, I said these people don't have sense for the other. They abuse your tongue. They abuse, they use you to express the dark side, my dark side, I mean, what I mean about. So, they express their sadism to others. Mhm. It's not only that what I hate what I it's not hate I I don't I it's not hate I despise is that they like it it's because of you you don't know me what do you know what is me it is all in your head what is because of you because of, uh ah uh some behavior or stupid comment or you are uh, you brainwash me and uh because they are such a uh, You know, if you go to some forums, mm. you know, you can I I I read I read comments of people. They attack each other. And you can see what's going on there. It's frightening. So they accuse, they threaten. Look, there are, there are cases that from social media something stupid happened in reality. I mean something bad. Mm-hmm. You know, they meet in social media, they fall in love, then uh, they meet in reality and she is raped. For example, most of the uh, kids, kids, uh, take it for, uh, they become paranoid. You had such a case. Isn't it pity not to sleep, not to eat, to be depressed when you are, what, 13, 14? Really? Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah. what I'm trying to say, uh, if... If uh, there isn't, uh, if, and, and this generation, young generation, I don't know where their mothers are, they didn't teach them to make the difference, of, uh, to make the difference between what is good, what is bad. It's new. Uh, an- analysis, to Social give them some, new. to pass some experience, you know. It's new. Social media is new. No one knows how to deal with it. Even the inventors of social media don't know how to do it. Mark Zuckerberg, until today, is uh, struggling what to do, what not to do. It's very new. It's a tool, so it's very new. But uh, I think uh, social media is disinhibitory. In other words, it's an environment where inhibitions go down. In this sense, it's like alcohol. Mm. Alcohol has the same effect. Mm. It's disinhibitory. The question is, the interesting question in my view, two, one, why inhibitions go down in social media? One explanation is because it's not you. You're an avatar, so it's not you. As you, There are many behaviors you will not engage in because you have inhibitions, as you. But if it's not you, if it's an avatar of you, the avatar can do anything. That's 
and especially true where you can be anonymous, where anonymity is allowed, for example, Instagram, then everything is possible. Because as an anonymous person, definitely it's not you, no shame, no guilt, no conscience, no control. <coughs> That's the first question. Why, uh, by definition, social media is disinhibitory? It, it's not a necessary outcome. It could have been different. Why is it inhibitory? Uh, for example, I was a member of uh, I was a member of things that preceded social media, like uh, forums, support mm -hmm. forums. There was aggression and so on, but nothing what remotely close to social media. Yeah. So, what in social media disinhibits? Mm -hmm. That's one thing. What is it? Uh, I think my personal speculation, but speculation has to be of studied, yeah. has to be studied in research, not yeah. just to speculate. My speculation is that it's a ranking algorithm. In other words, uh, the more disinhibited you are, the more likes you get, the more shares you get. I call it escalation. So you start by saying asshole, you get 400 likes. Then you say uh, something much worse, some much worse expletive, you get 1,000 likes. Eh? Oh, okay. Then you put a photo of yourself naked from here, you get 2,000 likes, and then you show that part, and you get two million likes. <laughs> it's so it's encouraging. The it's reinforcement. It's a it's a positive rewarding system, positive reward system that encourages escalation. Sam, but values are changed. That that's, is not nice. That's one thing. And second thing, question I think is how to redesign it to avoid this inhibition. So now social media are trying to do that. They are banning some content. They are closing down accounts. They are just starting to do this. But I think it's too late, in my view. Too late because if they cross a certain point, they will lose all their subscribers. And this they cannot but, do. But um, for me, this signifies how, I mean, it's a proof, in effect, of letting someone be him, himself and expresses himself as avatar, right? Here it is, a social media. Look what they are liking. The bad words, the, uh, you know, <laughs> this part and then this part. So they are, they are rewarding the bad. Mm, true. Extreme. I don't know bad, but extreme. The more extreme you are. I don't think it's extreme. The more extreme there are some ex extreme sports. Conspiracy. But they are. Also rewarded. Also yeah, but on are, YouTube, some no, of the biggest. No, but peeling uh, bananas uh, for hours every day. You I know, know if it's, it's bad. It's, it's, it's pointless. It's pointless, but not bad. It's so, it doesn't have to be bad. It has to be extreme. A radical. Could be bad. Radical. Could be good radical, by the way. There are. You have, uh, videos. I don't think so. Yes, there are videos there is on not YouTube. So much, uh, no, no. There are videos for on good. YouTube. No, there are videos on YouTube. Altruistic videos that get millions of views. No, uh, just extreme, radical. So if you donate uh, your kidney to your brother, you will get 20 million views, and if you massacre your brother on camera, you will get 20 million views. Has to be extreme, and uh, this radicalization is built into the system. Can't they make the system, in build the system, changing the uh, parameters like they can. to support more what is good? They can, positive? but they don't want to. They don't because want they encourage the, the abuse. They encourage abuse. They encourage views. They, ah. they, need, they need the views. The model is wrong. The business model. Okay. The business model of social media is advertising. Uh, for example, Facebook didn't come to you and say, listen, if you want to have an account, you have to pay $5 a month, which is what they're making on you, by the way. Mm. $5 a month. You don't want to know what. I think if they made this, instead of 2 billion, they would have 60 million. 60 million. Mm. But still would make a fortune. Yes. Yeah, 60 million is $300 million a month. But the greed. But they want more. Yeah, the greed. $300 million is not enough. Uh -huh. They want $7 billion a month. Yes. So they opened it to advertising. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and because it's advertising, they must show the advertiser, the company that is advertising, mm. they must show how many views and how to get views. Radicalization, extremism. If they could get away with it, they would post terrorism uh, videos, snuff movies where people kill each other. I mean, they would post, you name it, they would post it if they could get away with it. Mm. But of course, it's illegal.
But if it were legal, trust me, they would put it. They would have, yeah. I agree. So, and very long time, by the way, very long time, and mysteriously, YouTube did not remove terrorism videos. It was not a big problem. You type terrorism. Yeah. I mean, there were terrorism <coughs> videos all over, millions of them. Yeah. And YouTube didn't do anything. For well over 10 years, YouTube didn't do anything. So, views. So, the, the youngsters can no longer make the difference between identity and self, mm -hmm. identity, self, mm -hmm. and avatar, mm -hmm. reality and virtual or hyper or augmented mm -hmm. reality, um, inhibi inhibitions and disinhibition, mm -hmm. and so on. So, yeah. they are disoriented completely oh, because okay. for them, social media is yeah. as real as reality, yes. and yet the messages are conflicting. For example, in reality, if you seek too much attention, you're a narciss narcissist. Yeah. It's considered bad. Arrogant. But on <laughs> Facebook, it's if you don't seek too much attention, yeah. you're an idiot. You're yeah. a loser. Yeah, loser. Yeah. So the messages are conflicting exactly. completely. Yes. And because both of them are very real to the teenager, mm. the, it it's creates what I called in the movie dissonance. reality dissonance. Yes. Dissonance. It creates a, yeah, a clash. And this is exactly what I witness. Yeah. The only thing mm. is that uh, if she was conscious about the impact, why she was still addicted to it? You have to give it up was, a lot. It was addiction. Yeah. You have to give up a I, lot. I, 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 should, I should help her overcome her addiction. It is addiction. It I'm, is. I'm, I saw her. I'm working she on couldn't, a... She couldn't. And she was actually... Mm. <laughs> she showed signs of obsessive compulsiveness. Yes, I'm working on a detox program for social media. It is addiction. Obsession. But it's not... Doing, okay, social... This... this uh, when I started to work with youth, and they all say, I found you on, uh, on uh, the social media. I, am, I don't have uh, any commercial... I didn't say what I'm doing, what I'm working. I did not even mention the program I uh, made. But uh, where did they get, they get this from? Yeah. You know, what is the... So I saw you were living with a narcissist, so you can, you know, okay, I will buy it. You are living with a narcissist? Yeah. yeah, okay. But uh, I will buy it. Many people come with that approach, so I can... But uh, they are, you know, um, I also received, like, uh, you are like this, you are like that. They, w w you have a, a Facebook page and they know everything about you. But even if, if they start from themselves, you know, mm. knowing that they choose avatar, the full, they created a false self. How they can uh, convince someone else about me, you, or anyone else? Uh, for one group of people, you will be considered God. For another group of people, you will be considered demon. You know? Why? They have to label. They don't know you. I live with you. I should tell them more. Okay, I was brainwashed. Even that I heard. Never mind. But... Uh, See, the, uh, on, uh, the problem with social media is that you uh, see the words, you believe the words, not the actions. My father taught me, you don't believe words, you believe facts, what was done. So this is the problem, actions. as I see, believe actions. because yeah. you are present and you know, you are talking. Uh, and there, th there is some effect because you act and you have, uh, you know, conferences, you have seminars, you have lectures. There is something that they can connect. So if I connect it, I would say I will, I will label you as educator. Hmm. Not like God, not like <laughs> demon, you know, that would be realistic. But because social media is, you know, extreme. So you are extremely good, God, or extremely bad, the demon. You know, polarization. Mm. And this actually, this is the confusing thing. 
which group to believe. While in reality, and if judging by what you are doing, and it's very good old philosophical you know, advice, you know, uh, why they are, just a second, why they don't see what other people do? Judge them. It's okay. Judge them. I will judge also. You judge me, I will judge you. We all have the inner critic, right? We have to, to value somehow uh, the situations our own, to be, you know, to, in order to learn a lesson and adopt to reality, not to social, to some, some uh, abstract world. I connected to, uh, I connected to, to an issue of, uh, that I would uh, discuss in a minute, but the irony is that social media were created so that to allow you to feel special because there's 7.6 billion people on the planet. Everyone wants to feel... But that's not uh, Everyone wants to feel... Uh, no, that's not necessary. Encouraging that's, that, not that's actually necessary. part of identity formation. Identity formation, separation, individuation, is about becoming individual. So, today is very difficult to become individual. Yes, true. A number of people is enormous. <coughs> so, you need, to, you need to separate yourself somehow. So, some people dress in a crazy way. Some people paint their hair green. It's not working anymore. Too many people with green hair. So they radicalize. So they put piercings in crazy places. It's, even that is not working. So we see radicalization of attempts to become unique. And social media is part of this trend. I want to be unique. The irony is that on social media, you can't be you. Exactly. So it's not you who is unique. It's your false self that is unique. Yes. yes. And that's the irony. Yeah. But coming back to your question, I think the problem is there's too much information. We have a glut of information. Someone calculated that in a typical day, um, in today's environment, or hour even, I don't remember, no more than day, but I think it was even hour, we get more information than our grandfathers, yeah. uh, grandparents in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So, too wow. much information. Yes. Now, how people react to too much information, they usually generalize. That's the natural defense for too much information. You, so, you have stereotypes for people, you, you can't, if you have uh, 25 million blacks, you can't interview 25 million blacks and form separate opinion on each of them. You have a general opinion of blacks, and that is called stereotype. You have general opinion of Macedonians, of Russians, of Israelis, of Palestinians. I mean, this is stereotyping. And the same, you have general opinion of narcissists, general opinion of wives of narcissists, general, general opinion of youngsters. Yeah, okay. We generalize as a defense against a glut of information, against too much information. Mm. And we uh, try to stand out, try to be unique. The, again, the irony is that you should be unique as yourself. And instead, the vast majority of people are unique as not themselves, as not they. Yes. It's bizarre. In a way, sometimes I think that I'm much more authentic as a narcissist than most people. Because as a narcissist, my false self is indeed me. Yes. There is nothing else except the false self. I That's really me. But this is exactly the, mm. the sick part, what, it, what I'm referring to. You know, I know people in uh, real life, I make friends with them, they went through whatever, some crisis, and then I read their posts and suddenly they are victims and in reality they indeed behave like victims. They uh, failed because of their grandiosity. Mm. They, uh, since they are narcissists, you know, they were self-destructive. You said something and about grandiosity the other day. What was it? Grandiosity is what? Grandiosity is self-destruction. Is self-destruction. Would you care to elaborate a bit on this? But this is exactly what I started to say. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, so many people that were narcissistic. Mm -hmm. But of course, narcissism on, is on the scale, right? Depending on the circumstances. Uh, so they used to be abused, abused in the family, 
rejection by the mother and so on. Uh, then um, there were, you know, here there some unpleasant events, uh, death of a parent and uh, failed relationship and so on. And with each abuse, with each, uh, after each event, the person became more and more and more narcissistic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes, that person was a victim, but every time uh, her as uh, situation, I mean, the death happens in life. You know, we we all will be will be yeah. die one day. Narcissism. It's is not, no. but the mm. paranoia, the cat, the catastrophizing. That mm. is more borderline or right thing, and it's good to think that way. Uh, also, a little bit paranoid. It's not so bad to be a little paranoid mm. after uh, having such experience before. Okay. Okay. But sustaining the fear, the uncertainty, it's uh, uh, actually it's a very needed to support your grandiosity. Mm-hmm. This is... And how is this connected to self-destruction? I still don't understand. Okay. Because... Uh, when you are grandiose, you have uh, your you, you have your narrative delusions. It's not realistic. Mm-hmm. In True. reality, other things happen. True. You think differently, not realistically. You don't have a realistic um, assessment. I mean, you 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 don't have reality tests. You know, mm. you, narcissists don't have it. Simply, they think mm-hmm. out of. Uh, uh, their grandiosity is pushing them to think this way. But they, in reality, they are really wrong. It's not so. And this leads to self-destruction or negative because, outcomes. Because mm. they, they are switched off. They miss this uh, click, what I'm saying. The click that translates the, the facts, uh, the rationality. Uh, you know, they can't translate it properly. So they are not really realistic. They don't have... Uh, realistic assessment. Uh, they don't have assessment to own reality. Can I and then they make a mistake. Can I tell the story what happened with the leg? With my leg? Because yeah, it supports. Let me, let me, yeah, yeah as an example is good. Mm. And then there, uh, because of the lack of, uh, lack of information and uh, because of uh, not uh, having the knowledge no, they have the knowledge, but not the implementation of it. Like they didn't learn the lesson and they repeat it and they make even worse mistake. And they said, no, now I will clench to it and I will finish with it. And, I, you know, and this is the, they will, for sure, they are going to lose something. Money, friends, families, whatever. They are going to lose. They are doomed. This is the self-destructiveness. Mm. And my, late, my latest example of people I said, wow, uh, because of this, she, he, whatever, will flip. I, I was telling you, wow, this is happening. He is going to flip soon. It took what, month, two, you know? And uh, the, uh, the bad act, the, I wouldn't mention what exactly, the product <laughs> that person made was to self-destruct. Where the reputation, and now, uh, I have to change, you know, I am now a victim. I have to change my, you know, what I was doing. Please, it's only excuse. And, and he can't see it, that, it's, that he really failed. He was not good enough for what he was doing because it was false, because he didn't know. This is one of the enigmas of narcissism that I haven't, that I hadn't solved. I dedicated 23 years to the topic. And I think I covered pretty much everything and solved, I think, pretty much most of everything. But this, this I couldn't solve. If narcissists are grandiose, that means they believe they are omnipotent, how can we explain that they have alloplastic defenses? How can we explain that they blame others for what is happening to them? How can we explain that they give power to others if I, if I feel that I'm godlike, I can't say 
that something bad happened to me because of you. Because that means you have the power to do something bad to me. And that means I am not all powerful. How can I have an external locus of control? How can I say that my life is determined from the outside? That would mean that I am not godlike. Mm. There is a discrepancy. How can I be dependent on other people for narcissistic supply? There is an inbuilt contradiction, inbuilt mm -hmm. discrepancy mm. in narcissism. Yeah. The narcissist on the one hand feels that he is God, but on the other hand, he feels that he is utterly helpless child victim. Yes. And uh, it constantly shifts. And this contradiction I couldn't solve exactly. I can't see how it can live together in the same organism. How this can. So I think narcissists are in constant state of dissonance. Yes. Constant. And state. they need constant validation. And they need constant. Even and, that and, doesn't and help. They need, mm. And they need a sore secondary source of support. Even that doesn't help. I don't, think, I don't think anything resolves. The, I think narcissists is the only kind of personality that is in a hundred percent of the time in dissonance. Yes. And nothing helps. Yes. Not cognitive dissonance tools, not learning new information, no. not using people's opinions, not love, not nothing helps to resolve this dissonance because you can't on the one hand claim that you're God and on the other be utterly dependent on other people to regulate even your tiniest yes. internal processes yes. that a child age nine is doing. Yes. Uh, be so helpless and so victim, mm. so much victim. So I think this dissonance in narcissism is permanent. Mm -hmm. Permanent state of dissonance. This constant permanent dissonance is something we can discuss uh, next time because I think it leads to very many contradictory behaviors. That's I think this is exactly what confuses narcissistic abuse victims. Not the abuse, because for abuse is predictable and constant. You develop coping strategies, you somehow survive or you exit. Yeah. It is exactly this contradictory behavior. Now, as opposed to someone like the psychopath, the narcissist's contradictory behavior is not premeditated, intentional, planned. The psychopath is doing it yes. as intermittent reinforcement. Yes. The psychopath is nice to you, okay. uh, abuses you, hot, yes. cold, yes. approach, avoidance. And this is to condition you, yes. to make you a slave. Yes. That is intentional. Emotional blackmail. Yes, it's intentional. Yeah. It's uh, Narcissus is doing it automatically yes. uh, because it is it reflects his inner state. Exactly. He is he is pendulating between uh, extremes. What I and see, and he cannot find the balance. He cannot. And what I see yeah. from outside, yeah. you know, I got used to that. Yeah, uh, each morning is different. <laughs> depends. Yeah, he cannot depends, find the balance. Depends what what he was dreaming about. I mean, no. you or whoever yeah. from my past, but uh, uh, we call it in a very, you know, old people are saying, oh, he has inner conflict. This is the first thing, you know, what Babas, the old wise women here would have said about such person. And when I read and work on the subject, it is unsolved, unsolved conflicts, uh, mostly, and as I see from others, but uh, it has uh, uh, many more other components. And to, for it to develop the very uh, uh, stronger, stronger the dissonance, uh, it's like a, I, 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 how I see it. So it's my opinion only. I haven't read it anywhere. It uh, depends on the very basic needs for uh, that person as a child, what were the basic needs mm. that were not fulfilled? So when I, uh, the program that I made, it's not for a group of people or for, I can't make a seminar out of it and teach someone about it, okay? It's very personal. It's very extremely personal and uh, uh, because it's uh, very sensitive for the other person. Mm. That person, uh, from that small thing, however, maybe sometimes, you know, I said, and for example, there was a very good example. I was so 
I was so uh, abused. Uh, I felt very bad that my mother did not buy me the shoes that I liked, you know, even though they were not expensive and this and from that uh, <laughs> uh, hurt or rejection or whatever, there is a whole philosophy. That person today buys shoes whenever has money. You understand? Mm. And it be became obsessed, obsession, compulsion. So you should it ask, became addiction. You should ask for you her understand? number out sometimes, of the shoe. Sometimes they're, they're very simple things. But uh, after years, Decades after no, abuse, I, it's enormous. I think we're confusing two issues. What you're then, talking about? What is, I'm trying to say yeah. uh, is, I, I'm not talking about what you said before specifically. Uh -huh. I'm telling you uh, that they are, you never know, and I don't think that narcissists are very courageous to look behind. So maybe cold therapy is good to re for re-traumatization. But because that is the only thing that wakes them up. Mm -hmm. I had an example like that, and, uh, and the awakening has to be another trauma. Mm -hmm. That maybe, or I think, it, uh, shakes him to that extent, that really learns something, not everything. Mm -hmm. There are many, many after that, many very small things as i mentioned before the very needs corrections redefinitions yeah. you know to correct what the mother had to validate for the narcissist so actually coming back to to social media this is why there are more narcissists in my view on uh, social media because they need validation mm. for what their mothers <laughs> mothers didn't do at the mm. time so it's like an addiction. Why they are addicted is uh, uh, the challenge actually to prove that they, uh, to themselves that they were right. Or that they are lovable, that they are worthy, or and that they, they are not bad objects. And they belong, they and blah, 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 and so on. This is what Freud called unresolved conflicts. But yeah. I, I, uh, I was referring to something completely different. I said that narcissism as a solution because it's a solution chosen it by is, the child. Yes, Narcissism yes. as a solution is an inbuilt conflict. You cannot claim that you are God. You cannot ask other people. You cannot be dependent on other people to tell you that you're God. In the narcissist, the, the narcissist is dependent on, on other, other people yes. to tell him that he is independent. The narcissist uh, claims that he is in control of everything but anything bad that happens to him is because of someone else. So that someone else controls. There is in co inbuilt contradiction in narcissism. The minute you adopt narcissism, in other words, the minute you become narcissist, you choose a life of constant dissonance mm -hmm. that can never be resolved. Mm -hmm. Can never be resolved mm -hmm. in any way. Yes. If you depend on others to tell you that you are God, you're not a God. If your life is controlled by your boss, by your wife, by your, then you are helpless. Yes. You are your victim, your child, you're yes. zero. Yes, true. And of course, that contradicts with the main feature of narcissism, grandiosity. So all the time, there is uh, humiliating information, information that causes resentment and hatred and aggression and uh, anger, rage. But if this does not exist, then the narcissist is dead. And this is the addiction to uh, social media coming from narcissists. And that's why, I mean, narcissists, narcissists yeah. use yeah, social media because yeah. otherwise they will disintegrate. Yes, of course. Without grandiosity, they will. Okay. okay. So let's... Uh, that's okay. it for today, folks. Let's hear the comment. If some of you survived... Or read them. Some of you survived. Uh, write your comments. We are very curious to know everything you have to say about the format, um, if I'm as handsome as I think I am, um, <laughs> oh. the, content, the content of what we have discussed, other topics you want us to discuss in the future, and so on and so forth. 
any comment you may have. I will, of course, delete all the comments which I don't like, <laughs> but uh, I will read them before I delete them. So it's something, you know, you can't have everything in life. Um, I would just say that they should be honest. Yeah, be honest. Be honest. Okay. I mean, okay be honest. At least they, they should try. Give me all the compliments I deserve. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Be absolutely honest. <laughs> and um, see you next time. Fly on the wall. Still not clear who is the fly, who is the wall. <laughs>